Good morning, everyone. Good to be here this morning, once again on the first day of the week, to worship our great God and His Son, Jesus. To be around His table at this time to remember the many sacrifices that, that Jesus made for us. And as uh, become our tradition over the past year or so that on the first Sunday of the month we have a, a singing and reading worship service. A time, a time to just sing hymns or songs, uh, gospel songs and to read from God's Word and let His Word and the many of the songs um, sing into our minds and to draw us closer to, uh, to our God. Today, as uh, you already know, we are singing and reading about the Lord's discipline. The word discipline uh, means the establishment of correct order and behavior with rules, training, etc. Now, on Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 11, it says that no discipline seems pleasant at the time. And I'm sure if you can think back to when uh, we were little types and we just didn't do what our mom or dad said, uh, we sort of knew what was going to happen. The discipline wasn't going to be very nice. In uh, Proverbs chapter 5 and uh, verse 12, it says, How I hate discipline. And uh, sometimes, uh, we are inclined to hate discipline, but uh, when we look back, uh, we realize just how important it was. Uh, our youngest son, uh, he worked one time for a, a, in a fairground, and uh, he came home and, and uh, he said, well, he said, I'm glad, he said, you two disciplined me when I was young. He said, I had some kids today that were in the fairground and said they were just as arrogant as they could be. So, at least we had managed to do something <laughs> that was appreciated. But in, in Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 1, it says, whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. Now, no matter uh, what it is in life that uh, we are doing or we want to attend. It will require discipline. Discipline to keep studying when all of our friends are out having fun. Is that right, Ruth? <laughs> <laughs> discipline to keep training when all our mates are back in the change rooms. Discipline to keep practicing when all our friends are on their computers. And it's the same with in, in, in work where you are doing an apprenticeship, it may be, and there's still studying to be done. Um, getting on to books that can tell you more about the trade that you are uh, uh, working in or starting to work in. And it's the same for the Christian. They have to discipline themselves to have the weekends organized so that their Sunday mornings are free that they can come and attend the worship service. Now, part of our worship is meeting around our Lord's table and taking part in the Lord's Supper. Regularly meeting around our Lord's table prepares us for those times when we are tempted to deny our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In Mark chapter 4, uh, 14, sorry, and beginning at verse 66, while Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also are that you also are with that Nazarene Jesus, she said. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you are talking about, he said, and went out into the entryway. And when the servant girl saw him there, she said, she said again to those standing around, This fellow is also one of them. And again, he denied it. 
And after a little while, a while those standing there said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you, you are a Galilean. And he began to call around curses, and he swore to them, I don't know this man you are talking about. And immediately the rooster crowed the second time. And then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. Too, too many Christians deny their Lord in times of crisis. And what a terrible sense of guilt, sense of guilt and, and judgment Peter must have felt when that rooster crowed. He would not, we would not want or expect that to happen to us, but it could. And like Peter, we are often tempted to deny Christ when, in order to please those around us. On the uh, first day of every week, we are, uh, we are to gather to confess Christ and to commune with him around this table. And through this regular confession and communion, we are reminded of how much Christ loved us and in turn, he, uh, we are strengthened and encouraged to live him and to be faithful to him in all things. Christ died for us, so we must remember that he was not ashamed to go to the cross for us. And we should never deny of him or be ashamed to tell others of him. Let's pray together. Dear God in heaven, as we meet around your table at this time, we thank you for the, the privilege of being able to be part of your family, of being able to uh, call ourselves uh, brothers and sisters in your family, and to look to you as our Father in heaven, who supplies all our needs. And Father, we thank you for this opportunity today. Help us, Father, as we come in with you around the table at this time, that Father, we will uh, allow uh, or take what we uh, feel and what we gain uh, from studying your word and from meeting around your table, from taking part of the uh, part of these emblems, Father, that we will carry this into the week that lies ahead, and that uh, Father, we will be strengthened for those moments when uh, Satan will uh, try to get under our guard. We thank you for the uh, bread that represents the precious body of Jesus in which he uh, suffered so much uh, for each of us. And ask, Father, that you would uh, be with us, that you would forgive us of our sins as we meet around your table at this time. And we thank you too, Father, for the fruit of the vine that represents his precious blood, poured out so willingly and so free to take away our sins. Help us, Father, to realize just what a great privilege, privilege it is to be a child of yours and in your family. In Jesus' name, amen.
Saturday night very early. And suddenly, in the, in the midnight, I woke up. I found my left eye very, very painful. And then I struggled and suffered my pain for Sunday morning service. So I was teary. Not only because Earl's wonderful lesson, but also because my eyes. <laughs> And once I finished my uh, worship, I went home and I had a long sleep afternoon. I woke up about 5 o'clock p.m. and I had an early dinner with, with my family. And during the dinner, I said to my aunt that I have to go to see the doctor because it's so painful. So my whole left eye couldn't open, keeping tearing. And my, 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 left, my right eye was very blurry. So the whole side view was very, very ter terrible. So I went to the normal medical center. I waited for about half hours, maybe more. And then the GP told me, once he saw my situation, he said, I suggest you go to the RAH immediately. So he said, he signed a Approval, approval, uh, referral later. So I went to the hospital immediately afterwards. And then doctor find my left eye, uh, the cornea, had the B <coughs> scratch. Uh, they wonder maybe it's a virus or something else. So I keep checking my situation. So they give me some drops, uh, anti-inflammation, and then so we went. I went home and then immediately made Google Monday morning at the appointment with doctor. And this situation shocked Noel. I know this is very terrible. It's bad things, it's negative things. So I keep staying in the hospital, I mean I visit the hospital RH Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And finally, my eyes recover and press it all. This is a very short story, but during this uh, period, this week, the Lord's Spirit inspired me that this kind of process of, of discipline. The reason because I was sitting in front of the desk too long. My position just like a turtle because I have to watch the uh, screens. So my whole position just like <laughs> <laughs> And if you visit my heart, you can see uh, we have a pet. We have a turtle in the park. And a turtle every day just lie on his dog just like this. <laughs> and unfortunately there's a, another big turtle in front of the desk that was me. So God this way is you want me to take a rest. But I couldn't. I mean, deliberately working hard. And God used this way to teach me. I took a whole week off. And then postponed the last week's lesson to this week. And during this week, during last week, I received many students' email that concerned my situation. They asked me, when is the result coming? <laughs> I said, sorry, I'm resting. This is the discipline. But this positive is during the, I was in, I was sick. My daughter, she practiced her driving skill a lot. <laughs> Precisely part of roadside without any problem. <laughs> Driving on the road without problem. Even I was pick up my son from the high school. I during the return way to the home. I was selected. I slept because the bright, the light is so bright I couldn't open my eye. So I slept. But she's just a learner. But she can safe, safely drive home. Praise the Lord. This is positive.
through this uh, myself, myself, the experience, I found the Lord's discipline of His wonderful will. As a Hebrew, 12, 16 to, uh, 6 to 13, because the Lord disciplines the one He loves, and He, and he chastens everyone He accepts as His son.
A wise son heeds his father, father's instruction, but the mocker does not respond to rebuke. Discipline your children, for in that there is hope. Do not be a willing party to their death. Do not withhold discipline from the child. If you punish them with the rod, they will not die. Punish them with the rod and save them from death. Discipline is to avoid the death. A rod and a reprimand impart wisdom, but a child left undisciplined disgrace its mother. Discipline your children, and they will give you, you peace, and they will bring you the delights you desire. May the Lord bless all parents and all children. God, the Lord's discipline through He let me have the eye problem, and He let me take a whole week off, He let me suffer the pain, but also He let me recharge, just like a flat battery and be charged. And he let my daughter practice her driving skills. Incredible. So this is a kind of a blessing because God loves us. God let us know what which way we should go. As job five, seventeen to twenty seven, because my eyes uh, view is not good enough, I asked Daniel my son to come to have the reading of the scriptures. Sorry, the writing is just a bit too small on the screen, so. Job 5, 17 to 27. Blessed is the one whom God corrects, so do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. For he wounds, but he also binds, he wounds, but he also binds up. He injures, but his hands are also, but his hands also heal. From six calamites, he will rescue you. From seven, no harm will touch you. In famine, he will deliver you from death, and in battle, from the stroke of the sword. You will be protected from the lash of the tongue, and need not fear when destruction comes. You will laugh at destruction and famine, and need not fear the wild animals. For you will have a covenant with the stones of the field, and the wild animals will be at peace with you. You will know that your tent is secure. You will take stock of your property, and find nothing missing. You will know that your children will be many, and your descendants like the grass of the earth. You will come down, you will come to the grave in full vigor, like sheep scattered in season. We have examined this, and it is true. So hear it and apply it to yourself. Lord's deep discipline is to help to avoid death, to help us grow up, to help us to know how to face our future, because He loves us. 